Hey guys, welcome to another Fisher Builds. I'm Bobby Fisher. This is part two of the Ecto Containment Unit cover build. Uh, this time I'm going to cover the wiring in detail. And since the last video, I watched several other people's videos on how they built it. And this mechanism I actually rebuilt with new components so that it's a little bit easier and a little bit more reliable. Um, it's almost more, I built it stronger and it could withstand a little more abuse, whether it be from a child or just myself. Um, but it could apply to anybody that wants to build like this. It's very strong and it'll last for a long time and a lot of uses. So I think that'll be good. I'm going to go through each individual part, explain how it works, how it's hooked up, and go through what goes where and why. Um, so we'll go through that. Let's get started. A potentiometer with on off. So it'll click and then once you click it on, it allows power to run through it. This is just my secret power switch. This is the knob that's painted red on the unit. So these are the testing buttons. The real buttons are rectangles, but it's the exact same configuration. They have five prongs. So here's your power on the outside, and then the inside is your ground, your neutral in the middle, and then activated went up, activated went down. And we'll go through how to wire these. We need a red, a green, and a yellow. A limit switch. This is a dual pole, dual throw limit switch. And as we hook these up, when it's up, the red light will be on. When pressed down, the green light will turn on. This is how we switch when we pull the red handle down. And these are gonna act as stand-ins for the overhead lights, which are red and green. And it's just two wires coming out of it. Because it's on a battery system, we don't need a ground. So we just need, in the overhead lights that I link on Amazon, it's just a white wire and a black wire. And then to connect to the battery pack, a 12 volt quick connect. And you can buy these little pigtails loose with both male and female. You just plug right in. If you want to use the alternative 12 volt of eight packs, you can get these kind of nine volt or 12 volt connectors with a male as well. In order to hook it up to the system, you would need a female pigtail. And the link in the description, it's a set of both male and female pigtails. And we're going to need several cutoffs of 20 gauge wire. You can strip the wires however you want. This is the easiest I've seen. Stick the wire in a little more than an eighth. That's it. And I'm just squeezing. That's all it does. Yes, you can do two at once. In order to make quick connections, so you don't have to solder, you don't have to do anything, we're gonna use a lot of these, which are called wire lugs. And it's basically just a slip sleeve that slides onto these little nodes. Okay, these are 2.8 millimeter to go with these buttons as well as the big rectangular buttons and you can see there's a little dot that's actually a nub that kind of locks into these slots giving a nice strong connection so it's tough to get off okay in order to get these on you're gonna need one of these crimpers and i'll have a link below if you look, there's a little jaw that's slotted. So you load this in face down with the opening at the bottom of the jaw, and then slide your wire in just past where the sheathing is on it, and then squeeze. And 
and now I can plug this end in. All right, so let's simplify this so it's a little easier to understand. So three buttons, each with five contact points. We're gonna say the 12 volt label is the positive and the no label is the negative. So we'll just put that on the left. So we always have a reference point of where to position the buttons. We have a potentiometer, three contacts for control, on off contacts, those are the only ones we're using. We have a dual pole, dual throw switch, six contacts, we'll call the top the one with the button. It's gonna be positive, negative, common. Positive, negative, common. Label side, blank side. All right. To illustrate how to get things to work, I'm just gonna separate them by colors, okay? How to make the red button work, how to make the yellow button work, how to make the green button work, and jumpers that just supply power or connect things that otherwise wouldn't be. So blue is kind of the uh, neutral helper. All right. From the battery, we're gonna connect one of the pigtails to the potentiometer. From the battery, we're gonna connect to the positive, the labeled 12 volt of the red. I'm gonna leave it short because multiple wires are gonna be coming into this point. I twist them together and then put an extension on so it's a single plug, not multiple plugs trying to get on the same contact. So leave them short and then you'll wrap them together and put a single contact in. All right, then at the potentiometer, gonna leave one short because we're gonna connect it again. So from the negative of the potentiometer, it goes to the center of the red. And then on the red button, if you connect the negative on the red to one of the sides, these indicate if it's gonna operate when it's up or down. So if we press the button in, the light turns on. That's what we want. On this configuration, if you connect these two with a jumper, now the red light will work. You push the red light in, it'll turn on when pressed. All right, now to make the yellow light work. Connect from the center, and here you'll have a, a dual junction as well. From the center pin on the red to the positive, basically you're drawing power from this battery loop going out to the positive of the yellow. Just like before, we're gonna do a jump. On my configuration, it's this way. Yours may be this way, make sure you test it. But if these don't turn on when you press, you might just have to switch this jumper between the outside, between the negative and the outsides. And then go from the center to the positive. So these are connecting. So these two wires, you would thread together and then build an extension to plug into that contact. Now, the yellow is wired. So you press the red, it turns on. You press the yellow, it turns on. Now to make the green work, add a positive to this cluster, twist it together with the rest. In order to complete the green loop, we have to add the light bulbs. Each light bulb has two wires coming out of it. We'll just call it positive, negative. Should be a black wire and a white wire. At this contact, you'll have two wires going into the same uh, lug nut. You're just gonna tie them together, split them off, and have one go to the green. And then the negative of the light goes to the negative of the green button. The negative of the green button is gonna go to the dual pole, dual throw switch, and the common on the green side is going to go back to 
the potentiometer, we'll call it the negative side. These two can be tied together and jumped to the contact. Now, when you pull the lever, the green will light up. We still need to connect the red though. The red, one of the wires snakes all the way up to the positive on the red button. So when you press it, it'll turn on. The other side goes to the positive on the dual pole, dual throw switch on the red side. And the common goes up to the common on the red button. So when this is pressed, these connect to the red light. So the red light will turn on. When this is pressed, the red light will turn off, the green light will turn on. And that's the wiring. And don't forget, I added quick connects from the bulbs to the buttons. So you want a male or female coming out and connect A to red and B to black. And then C to red, D to black. And then you'll have male, and then on the other end of these wires, you'll have their counterpart, whether it be female or male, it doesn't matter, as long as they obviously go together. And then I also have a quick connect here, connecting these all together. So this is a quick connect, we'll call this E and F, and you just connect those, red and black, to red and black. So to turn the system on, potentiometer, doesn't matter if you turn it all the way up or just past the click, I just like to line it up with the arrow for fun. And then red light, turns on the red overhead light. Yellow light, turns on the yellow button. Green, you don't have to press. Pull the lever all the way down and the light switch from red to green. Here's the limit switch mounted upside down. And it's just on a hinge pivoting on this bolt with this lever. So the lever comes up and then hits the limit switch and that little roller right at the end of the limit switch allows it to roll along the board so it doesn't get too compressed. And as it comes in contact enough, it switches the overhead lights from red to green. There's a spring attached at the base of the lever and then inside the box, guiding it. And with a little bit of help, it resets. And this slot is actually tapered slightly skinnier at the bottom. So when this is pulled down, it'll catch and leave the overhead green on just enough. And then a little bit of help, it resets. It's a little added kind of rudimentary function. You could use magnets or something to catch it, but... So that's part two of the ecto containment unit build. Now everything's wired, no delays, and it's reliable, it'll fire every time. So that's for part two. Part three, we're actually gonna go through and weather this, make it look a little more grimy, using some acrylic paints and some oil paints, uh, just to add a little bit of age, like it's been here for a minute. And check that out, it should be coming in the next few weeks. Appreciate it, see you next time.